the show me state, they call it Missouri. Well, okay, Missouri, show us this year whether or not you're going to let the power brokers in your state roll back the reforms that Missouri voters adopted two years ago. Hi, I'm Hedrick Smith, longtime New York Times correspondent, former Washington Bureau Chief, and creator of investigative documentaries for PBS and Frontline. Normally, when we talk about politics in America, we're talking left and right, Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals. But in Missouri this year, the political civil war in state politics is kind of up and down. It's the grassroots versus the power brokers, the people versus the politicians. And the issue is the way the politicians and power brokers in the legislature have been rigging election maps to keep the old gang in power. Old-fashioned gerrymandering. Well, in Missouri, it's Republicans who do the gerrymandering. In other states like Illinois and Massachusetts, Democrats do it. But in Missouri, Republicans have gotten so good at it that they can let the Democrats win a bunch of blue seats in Kansas City and St. Louis and keep the rest of the state so red that they have huge Republican supermajorities in the state legislature. Well, you can imagine this has led to a lot of uh, criticism. A, a newspaper editorial saying that the legislature has become the tool of special interests run by backroom deals. You've even got some former Republican lawmakers joining Democrats, independents, uh, advocates of good government, groups like uh, League of Women Voters and Common Cause, saying something's got to be done, uh, that the districts have gotten so rigged that in some cases, maybe 25 percent of the districts statewide, there's no competition. There's only one candidate running because it's hopeless for the other side. The maps have been rigged so much. Or the majorities are so huge that voters really basically don't have a choice. So in 2018, a whole slew of groups and people from across the political spectrum, from Republicans, Democrats, Independents, came together in a group called Clean Missouri, which wanted a constitutional amendment to clean up the politics in the state, put limits on campaign spending, put a lid of $5 on how much lobbyists can give to candidates, and most important, bring that whole process of drawing election maps out of the back room, out in the public, in the sunshine, lots of hearings, and um, rules that say you can't do it to favor one party or another, and have a special state demographer to write the maps, to, to draw the maps, uh, so that they will be nonpartisan and, and get applied fairly. They took it to the voters in November 2018 by petition. They got a referendum, and lo and behold, 62% of the voters in Missouri favored and adopted the clean Missouri agenda. The old gang didn't waste a second. The very next morning, the Speaker of the House said, we're going to overturn the will of the people. We're going to roll back the reform. We're going back to the old system. And sure enough, just this last month, the big Republican majorities in the state legislature of Missouri passed a new plan, their plan. It got rid of the idea of, of nonpartisan uh, redistricting rules. It got rid of the nonpartisan map maker. It turned the job back to the old uh, politicians who've been doing it all along. Well, you can imagine. The advocates of clean Missouri shouted bloody murder. They called the new plan dirty Missouri as opposed to clean Missouri. And they said they were going to go out and fight it and beat it in the fall election. The old gang said, we think we can beat it because back in 2018, we think the voters didn't know what they were voting for, which some voters have taken as a bit of an insult to their intelligence. Anyway, the showdown is coming in November, the people versus the politician. And it's closely watched in a bunch of other states because there are politicians in places like Michigan and Colorado and Utah uh, and elsewhere who would also like to roll back some citizen reforms. We don't let foxes guard hen houses or let bank robbers protect banks, but we let politicians draw their own district lines. Yeah. In Tallahassee, Republican lawmakers are out to squelch reform. So it's Here's impossible. No, may, I, may I finish sure. the answer? They're grilling Ellen Frieden, leader of Fair Districts Florida, the citizen reform yeah. movement. Let's make one thing clear when we start. Florida is one of the most politically gerrymandered states in the union. It's the reformers versus the power brokers. I represent all the people in Florida who really want to see the partisanship in redistricting stopped. Reformers want to amend the Florida Constitution to bar politicians from manipulating election district maps with the intent to keep themselves in power. 
Uh, Ms. Frieden, with all due respect, the word intent, the actual intent could only be determined by a court, could it not, as a matter of law? No, I think that the intent starts with you. Lawmakers questioned Frieden for hours, nitpicking comments she'd made to the media. So can you tell me that you disavow those statements? I believe that my words are getting twisted here. So what I'd like to ask, please look at me, I'm, asking, I'm speaking with you. But this is a pretty serious matter. I mean, I, I know you had a six o'clock flight, but we're gonna change the Florida Constitution. I will stay if that is your will. I have put my life into this because it is something that I feel very passionately about. I'm a volunteer. I'm not getting paid to do this. I probably work 80 hours a week on this. If lawmakers intended to intimidate Frieden, their effort backfires. What impact did it have? It got me more committed to, to winning, and it got everybody who was supporting us more committed. Frieden's reformers show voters how gerrymandering stacks the deck. They point to District 3, a weird-shaped congressional district that snakes 200 miles from Jacksonville to Orlando. By packing it with black voters, the Republican legislature gave Democrat Corinne Brown a super safe seat and shifted white voters into nearby districts. That enabled Republicans to win the surrounding districts. It's called bleaching. For a fix, other states like Arizona, Montana, and New Jersey use independent bipartisan commissions to draw election district maps. But Florida's black and Latino leaders oppose that idea, and their support is vital to freedom. There's a kind of high level of mistrust for how these, these, these structures work. So, of course, people thought, well, why should I trust an independent panel that is going to be appointed by the elected officials that we're saying are not representative of who we are? We were against that primarily because it didn't take it out of the political realm. It would have ultimately the impact of hurting minority folks' ability to elect candidates of their choice. To get minority buy-in, Frieden offers legal protections and a radically new approach. We made it unconstitutional for legislators to draw districts with intent to favor themselves or their party. Frieden's coalition, spearheaded by Common Cause and the League of Women Voters, collects a million and a half signatures to put its reform on the ballot. And with strong media backing, they build broad bipartisan support among voters. The media's response to the Fair District's movement was incredible. We had editorials from every single newspaper in the state, not only once, not only twice, but probably five or six times at every major juncture. Come election day, Fair Districts Florida achieves the impossible. 3.1 million Floridians vote for gerrymander reform, a 62.9% super majority. But Republicans who had fought reform also win big, piling up huge legislative super majorities. Then in May 2011, the very same leaders who had savaged Ellen Frieden changed their tune. We have a constitutional obligation uh, to do this right, to make it the most open, transparent, and publicly participatory uh, reapportionment process in Florida's history. They promised to hold 26 public hearings and to put the whole process online. And making sure that we give citizens the direct say, literally the ability to send in their plans so that we can draw the lines that best reflect the communities that we all represent. It seemed too good to be true, and it was. For proof, look no further than the state of Florida. When the legislature unveils new district maps in February 2012, Ellen Frieden sees instantly that voters have been tricked. The new maps look a lot like the old ones, stacked to favor Republicans. It was gerrymandering with disregard for the Fair District's Amendment is what it was. When I saw the Republicans' 2011 redistricting plan, I was disgusted. The Republicans were willing to take the chance of defying the Constitution because they had been behaving that way for decades before then. They have legislative leadership had put together this scheme where they were going to act like they were following the Fair District's amendments when in fact the real maps, the real work on redistricting was being done behind closed doors by paid political operatives. It was a double game.
making clear... Orlando attorney David King, representing the League of Women Voters, goes to court to expose the double game. Lawmakers claiming they want maps from the public, but secretly getting their real maps from Republican campaign operatives. And so on a hunch, we, we subpoenaed a series of paid political Republican operatives. And what we got from this subpoena process was a treasure trove of maps and communications. Give me how you got the breakthrough. I presume when you take depositions, take testimony from the Speaker of the House, the Majority Leader, they basically don't tell you a lot. But you got to have somebody spill the beans. Who spills the beans and how do you get that? Well, it turns out one of the political operatives, Mr. Reicheldurfer, was a, a hoarder. He kept all his stuff. He had it in his computer. His computer should be like on the National Register or something because it had like 150 maps. Mark Reicheldurfer was a professional consultant for the Florida Republican Party. Sir, raise your right hand to be sworn, please. And a longtime political pal and personal campaign manager for the Republican House Speaker. Mark Reicheldurfer's files were the smoking gun. We had emails coming from Speaker Cannon. We had emails coming to Mark Reicheldurfer from other political operatives who were working at the Republican Party of Florida. Mark Reicheldurfer was a, a hub of communications. These operatives drew the maps, and then they found people in the community, in the Republican community, to actually file the maps with the legislature. One unwitting fall guy was then 22-year-old Florida State University student Alex Posada, a former Republican Party intern. Posada says congressional district maps were submitted without his knowledge from an email address of his that he rarely used. Months later, under oath, Posada says he never submitted any maps. With computer sleuthing, attorney Fritz Wormuth traces the bogus Posada maps to Frank Terraferma, a Florida Republican Party strategist. Oh, right by me. Here you go. In court, Terraferma admits drawing and circulating district maps. I shared my maps. I didn't put a, a patent or copyright on them. If someone thought they were good enough to be submitted, I'm certainly more than happy that they were submitted. And we found that his maps had more districts that actually turned up in the final legislative maps than any of the others. A circuit court judge finds the legislature engaged in conspiracy and illegal gerrymandering. The judge orders maps redrawn for two congressional districts, but lawmakers made only minor tweaks. We had to appeal to the Florida Supreme Court. The High Court's ruling in July 2015 is a political earthquake. It rebukes the legislature for partisan gerrymandering with unconstitutional intent and orders eight congressional districts redrawn. The state Senate then admits its maps were also illegal, and they're thrown out. When I saw the Supreme Court's decision, I started trembling. It was a complete and total vindication of all we had been working for for all these years. The courts relied heavily on maps drawn by Fair Districts Florida, which had immediate impact in 2016. With more competitive districts, five congressional incumbents are ousted. Political newcomers win, like former Orlando Police Chief Val Demings and Rollins College Professor Stephanie Murphy. And in 2018, reform brought more new winners. So what do you think the lesson or the message is for the rest of the country? The message is that our political system in this country can be fixed. And my answer to somebody who would complain would be, get out there and fix it. If we can do it in Florida, you can do it in your own state. I believe that we will win. Energized by such victories, grassroots activists made 2018 a boom year for reform. In five states, Ohio, Michigan, Missouri, Colorado, and Utah, they won gerrymander reform. In Maine, Florida, and North Dakota, citizen movements passed election law reforms. Seven states made voting and voter registration easier. And cities like Baltimore, Denver, Phoenix, and Portland, Oregon, adopted public funding of campaigns. We are seeing activism, the likes of which we haven't seen in decades. 
there is enormous opportunity to move reforms because people are hungry for concrete action they can take in this moment.